Want to learn how to take excellent reference photos without having to buy any fancy equipment? Stick around! Hi friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I always love having you here. So today I have got a little tutorial for you on how to take an excellent photo for drawing or painting a portrait from. Now, some of my YouTube family out there may or may not know this, but I am actually a professional custom portrait artist. When I'm not painting or making videos or doing a million other things, I also have a website specifically to get dedicated to commissioning my pencil portraits, customfineartportraits.com, in case you're interested. If you've ever seen any of those um, pencil and Conte grayscale uh, portrait drawings that I've done here on YouTube, I'll link around in case you haven't, but those I do on a professional um, commission basis for the most part. And I'm always having people sending me photos. I always encourage people to send me a lot of photos so that we can pick the best one to draw from. And I often have people asking me like, hey, I need to take a picture of my wife or son or you know parents or whatever. What's, what's the best way I can take a picture to make the best portrait for you? So I figured I'm just gonna help everybody out because I know a lot of folks like me, we also tend to paint from photographs because for one, models can be expensive, especially if you need them for like 30 hours. And two, you know, I paint all kinds of day or night. I could not even imagine the hell I would put someone through coming to have to sit here and pose for me at all of these random times. So anyways, it's great to draw and paint from life whenever you can, but realistically, most of us do a lot of it from photographs. So stick around, I'm gonna show you some very simple ways to make excellent photographs for portraiture. We're going to be focusing on four main things, lighting, location, the position of the subject, meaning the person in there, and then the focus or focal point. But basically it all has to do with lighting. And the good news is you don't need any fancy equipment. Your smartphone camera or whatever, you know, digital camera you have is going to work just fine. You do not need any studio lighting. You do not need any of that fancy print stuff. All you need to do is just focus on where the sun is. We're going to go over that, but natural lighting is absolutely the very best. So I really hope you learned something today. If you did, please think about popping that subscribe button. It helps to grow my channel and it makes sure that you will come back again and again and again and again and again. So I love you so much. Enjoy the show. And please, if you have any more questions about taking great photos, pop them down in the comments. I absolutely love interacting with you guys. Enjoy. Okay, so as I said, the number one most important thing that you need to worry about is lighting. And the way you find good lighting is first by scouting a good location. So a nice sunny porch might seem great, but you're going to want to be careful of any crazy shadows like that that might get on your subject. In fact, a really good way to make sure that you don't have a lot of glare on you is to actually go into some nice bright shaded area. So you're going to get very even lighting in the brighter shadow area. This same lighting effect can also be found at dusk as well. It's a great time to make sure that you don't have harsh brights and stark shadows on your subject to take your picture just after the sun has gone down but before it is dark outside. So my lovely friend MC is here today to help me demonstrate just how to take an excellent photo. So all of today's tips will be dealing with taking a photo outside because what happens nine times out of ten when you take a photo inside is it turns out to have really dim, really poor lighting unless you use a flash and a flash is even more of a nightmare. There's almost nothing that can be done about a photograph that starts out this dim and this dark. And if you do wind up taking one inside, for heaven's sake, make sure you pay attention to where that light source is coming from. Light coming directly on the top of somebody's head is almost always a recipe for complete disaster. Even my gorgeous friend MC looks like some kind of alien in this lighting. Now once you have scouted out a good location, you're going to want to pay attention to the position of your subject in accordance with where the sun is shining. You might think that you would want the sun shining fully on someone's face and that would make a nice well lit photo, but for the most part, people are going to be squinty eyed and look uncomfortable and it's going to kind of bleach out their faces a bit. Best not to do it full straight on. 
And same is actually true of the reverse. You do not want to position the person with the sun directly behind them either because what's going to happen is they are going to look dim and dark and they're going to be so evenly lit that there's going to be no highlights at all and they're going to have this weird halo effect that might look cool in photographs but does not work well in portrait drawings. Okay, so now that we've found a nice mixture of light and dark by having the sun hit one part of the face, you really want to make sure to pay attention to the aperture of your photo. Now, don't worry, that's just a fancy word for how much light you let in your photo. I think every smartphone and basically every digital camera has a way to adjust the lighting. You just don't let as much in if it's a super bright day or maybe a little bit more if it's a little bit dim. Now this shot is nice, but it is bordering on too bright. What's going to happen is that the whole side of her face is just going to be a stagnant, bright, bleached out color. It's not going to give a lot of definition. Now this is obviously an exaggeration of a photo that you would take, but just to show you that giving your subject way too much light cuts out just as much definition as does giving it way too little light. You really need to find that Goldilocks zone in the middle. Okay, now how gorgeous is this shot? The lighting is perfect. MC's got a lovely natural smile. She's got the nice highlights that are gonna pop out as well as a few low lights to give her some definition. This is an excellent shot to draw from. Now, keep in mind that for my drawings, I am not concerned with what the background is. If you need to worry about the background of your portrait, then you must also take that into consideration. However, painting and drawing allows us to change up whatever we want, so I would still say lighting is number one. Now, of course, Captain Obvious will tell you not to take the photo from way far away nor to try and use an out of focus shot because you can only get out of your portrait what you put into it. Out of focus shots are doomed from the start. But also you should think about what does your subject look like? Do they look natural? Do they look comfortable? Is it a genuine smile? Are they cramming some weird arm or hand movement in there to look like some freakish updated glamour shot? Try to get a candid photo as much as you can. It helps to take a whole lot of photos, maybe while you're talking or even trying to make your subject laugh a little bit. So once more, here is that gorgeous portrait, well lit at a great angle and with a lovely natural smile. Now don't feel beholden to having a big smile though. Sometimes just a nice natural look can be excellent for a portrait drawing too. This would be more of a traditional portrait look. So now that you've got it all figured out as far as location and lighting of your subject, go ahead and think about the actual position of their body too. We are not flat cardboard cutouts. So you should put your subject at a slight angle. It's just gonna give them that little bit of 3D realness that really helps them pop. Now I just want to show off a few of my favorite pencil drawings. If you take a look, these all have really nice spots of highlights as well as low lights. You don't want to be afraid to have a nice little bit of differentiation in there. It's going to give your portrait some real dynamism. Thanks for being here folks. I hope you learned something today. If you did, think about popping that subscribe button. See you next time.